Thank you. Thank you very much. Can you all hear me okay? Yep, all good, Daniel. Yeah, okay, good, perfect. So thank you very much. Welcome to this session. Uh, the title of the session is Adoption of Graduate Attributes through the Use of Batches. First, a big thank you to Al for giving me the opportunity to showcase this work. Okay, have been working in this project for the last year and year and a bit. And I think it's a good opportunity, this session, because I want some feedback. Okay, I have been working in this project. I have worked for two departments. I will tell you a bit more about the departments that are involved in this project. But I really would like feedback about what you think about this project. If you think that maybe, I don't know, it could be used in other institutions, if maybe, I don't know, other people is interested. So good opportunity for me first to have feedback from all of you. Second thing is that, we have used the BLE as the platform to generate those batches, okay? Because we think that the BLE is, is one of the places that we want to use it as its full potential, okay? We don't want to use it just as a repository. We want to use it for more things, okay, as a full learning platform. And this is why we have used the BLE for this project, okay? So I would like to know more about what you think about it. And then I would like to know more about what are your different approaches to graduate attributes. Okay, I'm really interested in knowing how different institutions are dealing with graduate attributes. So yeah, welcome, welcome to the session. Uh, first of all, a little bit about me. Okay, my name is Daniel Villalba. You've got a very smiley face of me here, very smiley picture. As you can see by my accent, okay, I'm not an English native speaker. I'm from Spain. I'm from a town that is called Hospital de Llobregat next to Barcelona, okay? Maybe, maybe, I don't know, the same weather that we've got here in Sheffield, okay? Because for the last two days, it has been like very hot days here, very similar to Barcelona. So I'm working as a learning technologist for sociological studies at the University of Sheffield. As I told you, this project, I have been working in this project for like a year and a bit. And at the start, I was working with two departments. So this is why sometimes you will see examples that this relates to politics and other examples that relate to sociological studies, okay? And this is why, because I have been working for two departments and at the moment I'm only focused on sociological studies, okay? So that's uh, where you can find me. Then my background is in computer science, okay, and web development. And I tell you that because the tool that I'm going to show you today is based on website, like server site, okay? So because I'm comfortable with this environment, this is why I have used this tool, okay? Um, maybe it could be other tools, something like that, okay? I'm using that one, and this is the one that I'm going to show you today. And this is my email address, okay? I will put my email address as well at the end of the presentation. If you want to contact me, if you want to know more information about the tool, if you want to test the tool as well, okay? So I'm really happy to start conversations to, to see if more people is interested in this tool. So, okay, a bit of overview of today's sessions. So first, I will start giving you some context about graduate attributes in higher education, okay? So why are universities using graduate attributes? Why they think are important, okay, graduate attributes? So I think that it's good that we talk, okay, and I'll explain you a little bit why graduate attributes. Then, as, as uh, they have been telling you, so I'm going to do a quick poll, okay? So this poll is going to be based in Blackboard Collaborate, okay? So I'm not going to put you in discussion groups or anything like that. I'm just going to use the very basic functionality in Collaborate just to know what is your approach to graduate attributes, okay? Are you using graduate attributes or not? What graduate attributes are you using? So I think it's, it's interesting. And then I'm going to do a live demonstration, okay? I'm going to show you the tool that we are using here at the University of Sheffield. Bit risky, okay, but why not, okay? So let's just do it. Let's do a live demonstration. I'm going to show you how it feels to be an academic and to use the tool, okay? I think it's important. And how it feels for a student to see those batches, okay? So yeah, live demonstration of the tool and it will go all right, okay? So I hope, so yeah. 
it will go all right. And then <laughs> the last part of the session, I will talk a little bit about what are the plans for the future, okay? Something that I'm really interested in as well, and knowing what other institutions are doing, okay, with uh, graduate attributes. The, here at the University of Sheffield, there are some changes, okay, in relation to the BLE. We are moving to a new, like, version of the BLE. How will this impact on how we are using the BLE for batches, okay? It's a still a bit unknown, but I will, like explain you about the possible options that we've got open, okay, that we've got in front of us. So that's the overview of the session, okay? So now, if at any moment of this session, you get inspired, okay? You want to know more about the tool. Maybe you want to use the tool, okay? You've got this spark, all right? I don't know if you know the person in this slide, but it's Marie Kondo. Marie Kondo is famous for this like Netflix series where she helps people to organize their houses, okay? And specifically their clothes. And the idea is that uh, she picks a piece of clothes and if a spark show, you keep it, okay? So more or less the same thing. So if you've got this spark today and you want to know more about this tool, contact me, okay? And I don't mind to give you access, okay? And to, um, I don't know, and then you can test the tool. The BLE that I'm using is Blackboard. We are in the original version and we are going to move to the ultra version. So that's the, uh, the question that I've seen on the, on the chat. Good, so let's, let's go to see a bit of context, okay? Good, so to put a bit of context, okay? This thing about graduate attributes. So we know that universities are facing a lot of pressure from two main stakeholders, okay? And pressure related to the employability market. We've got demand for employers that they are demanding more skilled employees, okay? And sometimes those skills that they are demanding, they are not linked to disciplinary knowledge. They are linked to skills that they are like entrepreneur skills or soft skills, okay? Like communication, like leadership, like management, or skills that could be, you know, being, being more knowledgeable about AI, okay? or some skills that are not directly linked with the things that they are doing on their course, okay? And the demand is always there, okay? And it's always changing and it's always like renewing, okay? With more, more, more skills. One pressure. The other pressure, we've got it from the students, okay? The students, they are paying, okay? Their fees and they are demanding value for their money, okay? What they want at the end of their stay at the university is a rewarding job, okay? So we've got pressure from the employers and pressure from the students, okay? What are universities doing? So universities are investing more in employability and career services, okay, because of this pressure. The image that you've got here is the image of the new building that we've got here at the University of Sheffield. I don't know if by the shape of the building, you can guess the name, okay? But it's called the WAVE, all right? It was a bit uh, controversial, okay, the name, because some people thought that it was a swimming pool, but no, it's a university building. The thing that I want you to see here is that the main thing that you see just going to the building, you don't have to just go inside, just the main thing that you see is this employability and placement hub, okay? Very nice space, very big, where students can go and they can have advice about employability, about career options. So you can see that universities are taking this thing really serious, okay? And they are putting, and they are investing more on this employability and career services. Then the other thing that adds to that is that there is a lot of data, okay? Around, around all that, okay? Around all the employability and career services. This is the data that was released two weeks ago about graduate outcomes positive and negative graduate outcomes, okay? What they say is that positive graduate outcome is a graduate that goes to employment or remains in education. That's a positive outcome. And all the rest is a negative outcome. This data, it has been released and is available to everybody. And what it does is put more pressure on the universities, okay? Because they want to achieve a positive outcome. As well, 
we've got other websites that they are more designed for students, okay, where students can go there and they can have like a list of the best universities, okay, the universities that will guarantee them or we give them the better chance to have a positive outcome at the end, okay. So all this data as well, it's added to this pressure that the universities are facing. So what can universities do? to make those graduates more employable, okay? What is one of the possible solutions? So one of the possible solution is the graduate attributes, okay? That's one of the possible solutions. So universities are trying to identify what attributes are needed by employers and equip students with those attributes, okay? One thing that I think it's good to reflect here is that there is an, uh, like, um, an institution, okay, a national institution that defines what are those graduate attributes, okay? Each university defines their own graduate attributes. So this is why there are so many, okay? And this is why they are so like different because maybe some universities, they are focused on one specific industry and then those graduate attributes, they are directed to this industry. Maybe other universities are directed to other industries. This is why there are so many. This is why they are so different. This is why some of them, they are so abstract, okay? Because they want to include loads of things on these graduate attributes, okay? And because they are so abstract, they are very difficult to understand, okay? That this is one of the uh, problems that we've got with graduate attributes. Other thing. How are universities applying those graduate attributes? Okay, what are they doing with them? Good, so I've got this quote here that it says, most universities require their teaching staff to take responsibility for embedding the graduate attributes in their curriculum. One thing here that is good to reflect as well is that we are asking teaching staff and academic to take responsibility for those graduate attributes. I, I can see a problem here, okay, because we are asking people that are really, really busy, okay, that they've got, you know, loads of things to be responsible, research, teaching, loads of things. We are adding another thing, okay, that now you have the responsibility to embed those graduate attributes, okay. So, what we want and what one thing that I'm, I was thinking of when I was designing this tool is that I wanted something that is really simple for academics to use something that don't add up like more extra work, okay? Something that it has to be really, really simple. I think that's, that's key if we want something that actually works. Then the second point here is that mapping the curriculum can be useful, but it can also be negative for academics if they understand those graduate attributes. This thing that I'm telling you that sometimes those graduate attributes are so abstract that they are very difficult to understand. And if academics then don't understand the graduate attributes, then it's very difficult for the students to understand those graduate attributes, okay? Because students, they are really, really focused on the task that they have to do. And normally they miss, okay, that, oh, I don't know, I have done communication here, I have done leadership there, I have done management there. And if somebody doesn't tell them, doesn't remind them, then they will they will forget okay that this skill has been there so i think it's important that academics understand those graduate attributes so then they can like transfer this knowledge to the to the student okay i think that that's two important things that we have been trying to like figure out and trying to deal with okay something that is really simple at something that gives the academic the opportunity to understand and to engage with these graduate attributes so now, okay, I want to know a bit more, okay, about your institution. I think we've got 20 people here on this session. I want to know more about what is your approach with graduate attributes, okay? So the first thing that I'm going to do, a very quick, simple yes, no, is if, is your institution using graduate attributes? So, yeah, I would like to know, um, how many people are, are in this session that are using graduate attributes? So they've got an approach to graduate attributes. Okay, so I think that 
I'm going to show the answers. Yeah, I think that there are a bit more that we are waiting. Okay, yeah, I think that I will show it now. Okay, so I think that you can see the answers here. So, okay, the majority are using graduate attributes, but still I've got some people in the room that they are not using. That's interesting. Okay, that's interesting. And maybe uh, I will ask later or at the end of the session, what is the approach if they have heard about it or is something that new that maybe, I don't know, they are thinking now what they are going to do with those graduate attributes. The other question that I've got, and maybe for that we can use the, the chat, okay? Just put me two or three graduate attributes that you are using, okay? I want to see if more or less it's on the same, like, I don't know, length, okay? So if all of us more or less are using more or less the same graduate attributes or we've got different graduate attributes, okay? So I think it's something interesting as well. So yeah, put me something in the chat so I can see more or less the graduate attributes. Uh, yeah, Catherine, yeah. Catherine, Catherine, sorry. You've got your hand. Okay, so I've got one comment that is more about subject specific outcomes. So not like in general graduate outcomes, but more specific to the subject. That's, that's interesting. Digital proficiency. Very well, it's interesting as well. Very, I think in, here in Sheffield, we call it digital literacy, but it's more or less similar. You will see that the language of these graduate attributes, it's very similar, but they are not exactly the same, okay? Creative problem solvers, okay, yeah, very good. Group work, presentation skills, okay, very good. Very, yeah, similar to the one that we've got here in Sheffield. Okay, group work, citizenship, okay, independence, communication. This group work, it's something that it's very interesting, yeah, because um, when you read a little bit about graduate attributes, okay, and how uh, universities are trying to include those graduate attributes, group work is one of the things that gets repeated always. Group work is one of those tasks. Some students, they don't like it, but it's one of those tasks that includes a lot of those graduate attributes okay so yeah creative critical practice ethics okay okay and i've got the link of one of them perfect perfect so i can have a look at that very good thank you thank you very much so now that i've got a little bit of an idea okay of like what the people that are in the room ah digital fluency engage critical innovate solve problem okay Thank you. Thank you very much. Very similar. I like the sustainability because I think that we've got something similar as well here, here in Sheffield. Thank you very much. So now let me explain you, okay, the like the situation here in Sheffield, okay? How we are dealing with graduate attributes and why we have created this tool. Okay. Let me explain you what are we doing here in Sheffield. So let me explain you in a bit more detail. So this is the university statement, okay? And what I want you to focus is on the second part, okay? So to deliver this strategy, a framework for graduate employability has been developed in which the Sheffield Graduate Attributes, SGA, constitute a key component, okay? So we've got these Sheffield Graduate Attributes that are a key component for the employability strategy, okay? And let me show you, those are the 12 Sheffield graduate attributes, okay? As you can see, some of them very similar to the ones that you have put me in the chat, okay? So you can see sustainability is there, okay? Uh, yeah, that was working with others, the group work thing, okay? The digital capability, I think that there was digital fluency on one of those. So very similar okay some of the wording are a bit different but they are very similar graduate attributes something here that maybe yours is different but here at the university of sheffield those graduate attributes are one word or two words okay some of them they are very abstract 
Okay, so as you can see, purpose. Purpose could be like loads of things. Enterprising could be loads of things as well, okay? So those graduate attributes, they are very abstract, okay? Something that is good because then you can include loads of things, but something that maybe it's bad because it's very difficult to understand, okay? And what we've got here is that for each attribute, we've got three sub attributes. So actually what we've got is that we've got 36 attributes, okay? So in reality, we are dealing with 36 attributes. So I think that it, it looks a lot, okay? At least when you are dealing with graduate attributes, it looks like a lot of attributes. So what is the strategy, okay? How are we, we are dealing with that, okay? How is the University of Sheffield approaching these graduate attributes? So what we've got is a student survey, okay? That we call My Skills. This survey, um, all the students have to do the survey, okay? As you can see, there are 37 questions on this survey, okay? I told you that there are 36 graduate attributes. And the idea is that the students, they do this survey, okay? We encourage them to do the survey. And then what they do is like they check where they are, okay? With these graduate attributes, okay? If they are, I know, very good, okay? So they have tick, I'm really good at digital proficiency. Or if I have to like work a little bit because still I need to improve more in this graduate attribute. When they finish this survey, at the end, what they've got is this report, okay? The one that you can see on the right image. So on that one, they see all the graduate attributes, those 12 graduate attributes, and they see a progress bar. And then, as you can see on the second tab, it says my development experiences. On that, the idea is that them, the student, identifies the graduate attributes that they have to work with, and they reflect on how they are working during, the, during their time here at the University of Sheffield to try to improve okay, this progress bar. And once they are creating these reflections, they are improving okay, this graduate attribute. And at the end, they've got a full report with all the progression that they have done with all those graduate attributes, okay? This is how we deal with the graduate attributes. This is the strategy, okay, that we've got at the University of Sheffield. This My Skills survey has been running for the last three years, okay? They has been running for the last three years. So problems, okay? Or don't say problems, but they say, man, things to improve, okay, with this system. There is very low level of engagement in these first two years, okay, with my skills, okay? The level of engagement, it was around 50% of the students that they were engaging, okay, with this my skills survey. So because of that, on the last year, we have been asked as a department, what ways can you do what things can you do to raise the engagement with my skills okay other things to improve the sgas are a bit difficult to understand okay so when they are abstract they are difficult to understand and one thing that i want you to to think as well is like if you are an english native speaker maybe i don't know the word makes sense but if you are not an english native speaker maybe you need a bit more help to understand this abstract word because it's not linked with what you normally think, okay? And maybe you need more context to understand this graduate attribute. Another thing, those graduate attributes, because there are 36, okay? It's very difficult to like have all of them in one course, all right? So normally what will happen is like during the program, okay, during your time, the students' time here at the University of Sheffield, we will have to give enough opportunities for the students to engage. But that's difficult because you need like an overview of this program and all the different graduate attributes. And then we have to give opportunities to academics with engage with these graduate attributes, okay? So if we don't give academics to opportunities to engage, they are not going to understand them and then they cannot pass this information to the students, okay? So you can see the context, what 
we were doing at the University of Sheffield and what were the problems. So what was the solution, okay, that we thought about it, okay, in, in the department? How can we raise the engagement with those graduate attributes? So the solution was to use to approach digital batches, okay? A digital batch is a virtual display that recognizes and validates the achievement of a skills. Okay, and this fits very well what, what we want to do, because what we want to do is recognize the achievement of graduate attributes. Okay, so it fits very well. Okay, so this is why it's one of the things that we thought maybe, I don't know, batches, we've got something there if we want to increase the engagement with graduate attributes. If you are going to do more things with batches, if you are going to read more things about batches, uh, I recommend you to go to the open batch infrastructure from Mozilla, okay? Because it really creates the whole standard, okay, of open batch. In the solution that I'm going to show you today, it's very simple, okay? So I have not gone through all that. But if you want to know more, I think that that's a good, you know, a good place to 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 understand how they work. The other thing that it was good with batches and something that attract us with batches is that they are everywhere, okay? And people know when you are talking about batches, what do you mean, okay? So you can have it in your app when you are going to the gym. JISC has got batches, ALT has got digital batches, okay? So they are everywhere and people recognize them. So it's not something that nobody, I don't know, look at you and you they don't know what you are talking about, okay? So they recognize the when you are talking about digital batches and then the other thing that i think it's good to talk when you are using batches is like how are you going to use it okay because there are two positions okay it's more like are you following intrinsic motivation or extrinsic motivation okay when you read a little bit the literature what they told you is like batches works well when it maps progression when it's something that is linked to the things that you are doing in a program okay when it maps progressions then it works well when it's something that rewards okay like a reward system then it doesn't work as well okay but if it's something linked to the program that you are doing then it works well and that was one of the other things that you know motivate us to use batches because this is what we want to do okay so we want to map the progression okay we want to map when they have done one of those batches good so now our solution what we wanted to do we wanted something simple okay very simple for the academics to use we wanted something that it's embedded in our BLE okay because we want to use the BLE for more things, okay? And we want to like push students to go to the BLE because they will see all the other like resources that are there. We want to give the opportunity to staff and students to engage with these graduate attributes, okay? They have to do something with these graduate attributes to engage with them. And then at the end, what we wanted is to raise the engagement level with my skills. So the solution that we found is to create something like that, okay? This is one of the batches that we have created. And let me explain you what it is, okay? And what it's inside, and then I will show you how we created the, this batch. So what you've got here is like, okay, we've got a match, okay? With the SGA. And then you've got like the first uh, graduate attribute, okay? One of those 12 and then identifies the sub attributes as well. So in this case, we've got personal development and we have identified three sub attributes. And then I think that the important thing is the next part, okay? The next part is the one is created by the academic where it gives context on how the activity that they have done in their course matches this graduate attribute, okay? This allows the academic to have disengagement with the graduate attribute, and also it gives context to the students. So now the students, instead of like seeing personal development and seeing a batch of personal development, actually can read why, okay, this activity that they have done in the class matches, okay, this graduate attribute. So it can create this connection and it gives more context. And then they can understand better what do you mean by this graduate uh, attribute? What do you mean by the personal development? Okay, so I think that that's 
the important bit okay of this batch this text that is generated by the by the academic so now what were we asking the academics we were asking them to create three okay batches okay to identify at least three graduate attributes and to put some context we only asked them to identify three we didn't ask them which ones we didn't ask them uh, where to put them on the BLE. We didn't ask them like how long has to be the context. Okay, that maybe it's on the hindsight. So maybe I will have asked some of these things. Okay, but to be honest, the only thing that we ask them is to identify three graduate attributes and to put the graduate attributes. Okay, so that's the only thing that we we ask them to do. So now let's do the life example. Okay, so how the academics created those graduate attributes. So let me go to, I think that you've got it now. Yeah, I think that is there. This is a, a Blackboard, okay? Um, like interface that we've got is Blackboard original. And then what I will do is that I will go to one course, okay? All live, all right? So I'm going live now to the real course, okay? As you can see, we've got the image of the academic. We've got like our template with all these things that we've got in our Blackboard course. And I've got a section that we call employability. OK, on this section, we explain the students what are the Sheffield graduate attributes. And as you can see, it's the same image that I have shown you. OK, so we explain them. Those are the graduate attributes. This is the link if you want to know more my skills what it is and there is a video okay if you want to know more about how my skill works okay and you have to do the my skills survey and then we've got this tool okay and this is a tool that we are using to generate those batches okay so what i have done also as well is to put a small video okay for like academics to remind them how to use the tool, okay? Because sometimes I you know they do it like once a year and they forget about how it works, okay? But but yeah, so I have put this video as well so they know how it works. This section is hidden to the students, so this is only for academics. And now I will show you how easy it is to create a batch, okay? So what you do is you select what batch do you want. So imagine that I want working with others. And I will say that it's collaboration and leadership. And now on here, okay, what I need to do is I need to put some context, okay? So the work activity in week three, okay, gives a perfect opportunity to engage in leadership and communication skills something like that okay they have to give some context what you can think is that the academics they know okay all the activities they know how it works and it's very easy for them just to give some context okay about the activity that they are doing once they have put the context the only thing that they do is they click create okay and then the batch is there so now they need to put the batch in the place that they want, okay? So what they do is just copy to the clipboard and now just create an item, like a normal item that they will do, okay? Let's put SGA match, okay? This is the place where you put, you add content, you paste the content, and then you've got the batch. And then if I scroll down, okay, this, is the batch that I have created. Okay. So as you can see, okay, it's not it's not difficult. Okay. It's very easy. It's very simple how they create those batches. As you can see here on this example, they have created these three batches. So they have done the thing that we were asking them to do. Okay. On the creation of, of batches. So so yeah, as you can see, the live example on how we created those batches and how it's all included in the BLE, okay? So they have to go to the BLE and the students, they have to go to the BLE to see this, this batch. 
so now let's go back okay to the to the presentation some reflections okay because we did that on the first semester okay and after the first semester uh, we wanted to know how academics were engaging okay with this um, with this process okay were they creating the batches were they putting all the batches or not okay and because we gave freedom to the academics it was really really difficult okay <laughs> at least it was really time consuming for me to go course by course okay and checking have they done all three okay are all three is the same attribute or they have like used different attributes okay the length all right some of them they were very good with a lot of context some of them they were just putting like very small context okay so as a reflection from the first semester we knew that we had to like improve the system okay that the system was not strong enough okay so one thing that i have put here on this slide as well is the audit tool that we had okay to check how was the progression of the Sheffield graduate attributes and as you can see so there is a, a column that is called employability where we were just counting how many graduate attributes they were creating okay and that uh, it was not good enough okay so uh, i was spending loads of time trying to find have they done two three they have put it in a place in another place because we didn't say where to put it some of them they put it on the employability folder but some of them what they did is like they put the batch next to the activity that it makes sense it makes sense but it it, it it was a lot of work okay to try to like i don't know find all these batches so what we did on the second semester i i was thinking about how can i do it how can i create a system that i don't have to spend a lot of work okay so we need an admins we need a place where i can see all the batches together so then what i was thinking is like okay we've got the tool that creates the batches okay but we need a system where we can like store all these batches so they don't go directly to the BLE it's a store in a database so then what I did is like when you click create okay it creates the batch like you have seen it but also it puts the batch in a database and this is the second part what we did on the second semester and this is I'm going to show you as well live okay the admin section what we did in the second semester okay this is the section so if i refresh okay you can see like all the batches that has been created okay and that you've got all right on that system so if i do like a um, whole yeah you can see all of them here first thing as you can see i've got all of them there so it's very easy for me okay to see them instead of like going by one one by one the other thing that is good is like one you've got all of them well let me explain you okay what you can see here what you can see is like the code okay for the course you can see an id number okay so you know that you are not repeating batches you see the main attribute you see the context and you see the sub attributes on here okay you see the date that it was created and then you've got like some functionality if you want to copy and delete okay those those patches so once you've got this thing here what you can do is just do a filter okay and maybe say one to six i want to see all the batches from one to six and i've got them there okay so instead of like going like course by course okay now i've got all the batches in one place so it's easier for me just to see and compare them how they are doing it okay as well it's easy for me just to see all academic skills graduate attributes so i click and i've got all of them there okay so that really i don't know move the system to the next level okay because now i can do something with it okay now i can actually compare and now i can actually do more things okay with those graduate attributes another thing that is good is because how the coding system works here at the university of sheffield 
If I pull politics and one, what I'm asking is the level one, okay, of our courses. And now if I click submit, I've got all level one, okay? So I can see by levels as well. One thing that you can see here, and it's one thing that I did it on this system as well, is like, for instance, level one, I can see that there are some purple. I can see that there are some blue, but not many blue, okay? That blue is the more like my personal development. I'm some red, but it would be nice, okay, if I can compare those. So what I've done is like, if I click on that one now, I've got like a more visual display, okay, of how those graduate attributes, okay, are like spread along level one, okay? So as you can see, not many, okay, my development, okay, more of the purple, but a lot, okay, of the red one, okay, the interpersonal skills. So maybe something that I can do after I've got this information is that I can ask our academics, okay, so try to create a bit more of the blue or try to identify a bit more of the blue so then we can have like more opportunities for the students, okay? But this is something that we've got now available and now we can start using it, okay? And we can start like doing more things with those graduate attributes because we've got this admin side, okay? So, so good, that's the, that's the tool. That's what I wanted to, to show you today, okay? So what we have been doing here. Now, for the last little bit of the session, because I think that we've got 13 minutes, but I would like to give you some time to ask me questions as well. So some results, okay? So after we had this system, the engagement with the my skills, okay, that if you remember, my skills was this uh, survey that we had, it went to 82%, okay? I'm not saying that, I know, those batches or this system like was the only factor, but what I'm saying is that this actually like was a factor, okay? So actually, Having batches, what it does, and what I realized after talking with people, is that it puts graduate attributes in the conversation. So it gives students the opportunity to realize that, oh, so yeah, communication, so yeah, leadership. So yeah, it gives this like time for them to reflect about, okay, so this graduate attribute, I'm doing it in this activity. It gives them this time. And because, it puts graduate attributes in the conversation, it's more likely that then after that, they engage with them, okay? Feedback that I've got from this system, okay? In just, I don't know, uh, the second semester, that is when actually like we run it like full, okay? This is feedback from one of our academics, okay? So I will read the, the feedback. I normally explain to the students verbally in class, which are the SGA, that we are discussing, and I remind them that they can find the slides and the batches on Blackboard. I think the SGA tool generator is a great tool that made this process easier, okay? That's one of the things that I wanted, okay? To make things easier. So as you can see, for the academic, it's not a big burden, okay? To create those batches and to identify those graduate attributes. The student, okay? The student, they don't see how they create the batches, okay? For the students, it's more about the conversations, okay? It was clear that every aspect of the model was well thought out. Even the difference in employability skills were always specifically pointed out with each seminar and assignment, okay? So it's about these conversations, okay? They were having these conversations, okay, in their classroom. And good for the future, how time I've got? Okay, 10 minutes. Okay, let me spend two minutes with the future, okay? Plans for the future. So it's clear that I need to create some guidelines, okay? It's clear that I need to specify more what I want from academics, okay? What I want from them about the context, the length, what attributes. So we need to specify more clear guidelines instead of like giving them like full freedom, okay? On how to create those batches. As you can see, when I show you the tool, okay, there are codes that are not only for politics on sociological studies. So I've got more departments that are interested in these tools and they are testing the tool, okay? As well, I had conversations with the careers teams because one of my ideas will be how we can make this tool useful for the students as well. So when they finish, they've got the batches and they've got the my skills, okay? 
My idea will be to have like some connection between the batches that they are creating when they are like in the BLE, when they are doing their task uh, in, in our department and the Maya skills, that is the survey, the university say, where they track all these graduates. So if there is any type of connection, okay? So this is what I put here, a better use of the admin tool, okay? And to create more access for the students. And then, uh, yep. So we are moving to a new version of Blackboard, okay? That is called Blackboard Ultra. Blackboard Ultra has got something similar to batches, but are not batches, that they are called goals, okay? Those goals, they are something that you specify what a goal is, and then you attach it to different activities. Those goals can be used as graduate attributes, okay? But in my opinion, they are not as you know, functional or they don't have as much weight as the batches that we are having here, because on those batches, you can give your own context, okay? So at the moment, we've got one more year, okay, to try to know what, I don't know, what is the approach, okay? What is the path that we are going to follow? At the moment, as I'm telling you, I'm having conversations with the department, I'm having conversations with the career teams to see if there is, I know, the possibility of using the goals that, well, the batches that we've got in our department as a way forward, okay, on the new BLE, okay? So that's one of the things that is on the future and it's still like we are talking a little bit about that. So, yeah, that's me. So I think that eight minutes, okay? Uh, seven minutes now, <laughs> I think, if, if my clock is correct. So uh, I don't know if anybody wants to ask me a question or there I have not some... like questions in the chat okay. um daniel so charlie asked where is my skills hosted it looks similar to the skills we use on our target connect at Wrexham. the my skills is hosted by the careers team it's a university tool i don't know if it's used by more universities okay but it's not hosted as a departmental level it's hosted like by the university uh, if you want i can like find out more about exactly where it's hosted but it's not like a, a departmental tool. It's more like the university tool. Yeah. Thanks, Daniel. Um, Chris, uh, Kat asked, how did students see which badges they had achieved? Very good question. So when they go to the, to the Blackboard, okay, to the BLE, then they know that there is this employability section, okay? And it's one of the like the task of the academic to point them there, okay? To tell them that there is this employability section. Okay, let me show you. So this is our BLE, and then there is the employability section. If I go to the student uh, view, okay, you can see that there is the employability section here. And then on the employability section, they've got different information about graduate attributes, my skills, and then the different batches that they have achieve okay those batches are linked to the ble okay so they are not linked specifically to the students okay the students they see if they have done the task the task that the batch is referring to so then they have achieved the batch uh, what i tell you is like in the future i want a type of system when the student can go to a website can say i have done this course this course this course and then i've got all these batches what I'm trying to do is work with the career teams so we can have something that is linked to the Maya skills, okay? Because it makes sense that if the students go to the Maya skills and they've got a report, maybe they've got something else there that it will show them all the batches. But at the moment, so to answer your question, they have to go to the BLE, the academics, they will direct them to the BLE, where is the right place, and then they will be able to see all those batches there. There's another question from Faye, which you, you might have already answered, but what is the process for creating the system that creates the badges? Is it something that you've, um, that you know, you were saying that is uh, owned by the careers team? Is it something they've made or bought in, do you know? Yeah, good, good question. So the tool that we are using to create the badge is a tool that I have created, okay? So as I told you at the beginning, so 
I know a little bit about web development and it's a tool that it's very basic tool. So basically it's, if you know HTML, a bit of JavaScript and a bit of PHP. So it's something very simple, okay? That you can create those batches. Uh, one thing that I told you and I said in the conversation, if you are interested, if you've got this spark, okay? And you want to know more about how maybe, I don't know, you can do it in your own institution. So you've got my email address there, contact me. And I don't mind, okay, to share the code, okay, that I have used, okay, but I want to start a conversation before actually sharing the code and making the code available to everybody, okay? So I want to know where the code is going. To. <laughs> so, so yeah, so I know who is using it, and then I can have a feedback, okay, as well from from that. But yeah, answering your question, so the tool that we are using to create the batches is a tool that I have created. Yeah. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Daniel. Uh, there was another question. Are students assessed for the badges or is it just by taking a course that they receive a badge? Exactly. So it's by taking the course that they receive the badge. If they engage with the activity that the academic has created, so then they will receive the badge. Yeah. It's more like a progression thing. Okay. So if they have done the activity where it's supposed that they have been doing this like a skill so that they receive the badge okay because they have engaged with this activity christina had asked was the tool easy yeah. to create but i think you you sort of explained how that was all, all put together um, yeah yeah so i think it's if people are more interested on how to use the tool how to create it so they can contact me and then we can start a conversation and and then I don't mind showing you how to use the tool, what you need to use this tool. So <laughs> I can say that it's not complicated, but I don't know. So I think it's better if we start conversations, okay? And then I can explain you specifically what it is. Yeah. I've got a question from Paul. Can students export badges, for example, to LinkedIn? That's a good question. I'm thinking about it. So I'm thinking at the moment, no, okay? But what I'm thinking, is through the admin site that I show you to create a student like site and from there being able to export it. I'm still thinking about how to do it, okay? But yeah, it's one of the things that it's on the on the future. It's 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 for my next development. <laughs> you can say about it. Yeah. Feedback from employers, not yet, but that's a very good question because I was talking with, well, that I didn't put the feedback because it didn't give me like any written feedback at the end. So it was more like a conversation. But one of the academics told me that a student said that he went to like an interview and having like engaged with batches allows him to create these stories that then he was using on these interviews. Okay. So related to what you were saying about employers, okay. But I can see that, I don't know, they are they are using or is this thing that these batches makes them reflect and makes them like to understand when somebody in an interview, they talk about, can you give me an example of communication or how, can you give me an example of management? So then, okay, it links to this batch that they have seen. Uh, okay, so this task, maybe I can use it in that example. So that it's something that they have they have told me so one academic told me that this thing has happened yeah. beth had asked does sheffield have an overall recognition of progress in my skills for example an employability award or something not that i'm aware of i will have to like uh, find out more so the maya skills what it does is it gives them like this progression i don't think that there is any award related to that but I don't know, I can, I can ask, I can ask, yeah. Any final questions? Good, I no, hope that it was useful for people to see this approach, how we are, you know, dealing with batches, okay? Um, that's my approach to batches, okay? How I have seen it and how we have done it. If people is interested, oh, I have put my, my email address, so uh, contact me. 
I, I'm, I'm also interested in learning like what other people are using, okay? If other people have got different approaches to batches, okay? I'm really interested to that. So that's not the end point, okay? That's the starting of more conversations, I hope, yeah. That's brilliant. Thank you, Daniel, so much. I think that was a really interesting um, session and great discussion at the end there. I'm going to stop.